Warning, this show contains adult language. Welcome to another edition of Up and In It. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff. And if you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show is about, it's entirely dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life on your own terms. Well, it's episode 290. I can't believe we've made it this far without going crazy. Well, today's about simplicity, life, simple life, uh, and how it always wins and how, why I'm going to delve into deeper a simple life, why I remain to live a simple life with all these crazy times and things like that. And this one's just off the cuff, guys. There's a lot of things been bothering me. A lot of things I'm sure has been bothering you guys. And I just been trying to think of, of content that I'm dealing with and that possibly you guys are dealing with. And I figured I would start with that. So for today and what happens to me is a lot of things, a lot of the, the heavy weight of everything that's going on, you know, this is uh, the last of the first week of October of 2021, or I'm sorry, November, the first week of November 2021. See, that's how messed up I am. I don't even know the fucking dates anymore. Well, this shit's starting to get heavy. It's like you have this weight on your shoulders, and I think more or less the weight in your mind. And what's happening with me is I, I need to come up with a residual income you know, for my family, uh, especially his daughter, and it, there's therapy and there's attention that needs to be done. And regardless, I think for my problems are really big <laughs> compared to most people. So that's why I work so hard uh, to try to figure these things out. But I know that a lot of people, regardless if they didn't have my situation, that they'd want to live a better life, cleaner, healthier, happier, and things like that too. And sometimes I think we have to weigh out where this modern life the, the, the life that we have before us is so chaotic and so insane. There's so many things that go on that you have to keep up with. And the brain is like a muscle and it gets tired. And mine's very, very fucking tired. You know, I'm trying to figure out all these things. To give you guys, for instance, where I'm coming from is we have such things in the digital world. And as far as making a, a residual income and an online business and stuff like that is we have like Google for a lot of the listeners, you guys probably have a day-to-day -day job, but for content creators, uh, even beyond having a business, right, uh, everything could be taken away from you. Google could take down your site. They could take down your YouTube channel. I'm sure some of you have heard about this kind of stuff. Uh, Amazon had this affiliate program where I was looking to get into a couple of years ago, but as I watched, they slashed prices by 50% as far as the income that you would make, uh, the percentage that you get. So Amazon basically used content creators to get the word out there to start selling products, which was genius. And it spread the, the Amazon brand, the name and everything. It's a, now Amazon's a household name that everybody can that everybody knows. And so what they could continue to do was to slash the price down from, say, 10%. If I sold a $100 toaster, you know, I'd get 10 bucks. Uh, next year, 2018, they slashed that by 50%, right? So now it's like you're down to like $5. And then they slash it again and again, and they just keep slashing and slashing these prices to where it's just ridiculous now where out of $100, you maybe get, I don't know, a, a dollar, maybe, maybe $2, maybe 50 cents, you know? So a lot of these things, I look at the digital world, what does this have to do with you guys? What does this have to do with an alternative lifestyle design is that things are progressing things are moving there's a lot of companies like amazon google youtube and stuff like that i think that they really don't give a shit about people like us and they shouldn't that's a business they got to run a business right but in order for me to get a message out to you guys uh, as i'm doing now i literally pay to do these type of things but there's no compensation and the compensation to start a a marketing you know to market a business to do something online is becoming more and more difficult so I follow a lot of people listening to podcasts, reading books, studying up, doing research on my, for myself on how to get these things started. And a lot of people are saying, get an email address because, you know, the, like everybody's email addresses compound these things into a list because if Google kicks you off or Amazon kicks you off or all these things, Facebook, you know, you can direct message your, your clients. You can stay in contact. That's like the safest bet. And it sounds so stressful. Now, in, in regular day-to-day -day life, I see the same thing. We have kiosks coming up where they're getting rid of people. You know, we have automation and AI and all of these things happening. And things are changing so much where it seems like we're moving towards a progression where people really aren't that needed in the modern age, the modern world. 
inside of this matrix thing, I guess we can call, right? So what are the answers, though? We don't want to sit here and dwell on all the problems, but these problems are real problems. Digital banking, the bank that people want to, uh, the powers that be want to know every transaction, everything, like be able to look in your bank at any time. It's like they have their hands basically in everything. Um, there's a lot of conspiracy theories of things that people used to look at and say, well, that's just a conspiracy theory. You know, that maybe they're recording things on your phone, listening to you and all these kind of crazy things. And uh, now we start progressing forward and a lot of people are looking going, wow, I think that's actually really a thing, right? Surveillance and privacy and all of these things just begin to jumble up your, your, your personal space, especially the space that we have inside of our minds. But the answer that I look at to all of these problems, because this is a solution-based uh, podcast, a solution-based show, is to go back to simplicity. And what I mean, when I talk, think about simplicity, um, I look at growing trees and plants and chickens, you know, chickens foraging, gr gr growing chickens on open pasture where you don't even need to feed them, right? They just eat the bugs and live off the grasses and weeds and things like that. Growing trees that create soil on your property and they nuts and shade and and food, like the, some, the foliage of some, some trees is actually edible. And it just keeps going and going. Saving your seeds from your tomatoes and cucumbers, zucchinis, and all these things from your farm. Diversifying your, your, uh, your, your types, the things that you grow, the species. And also keeping those seeds which keep multiplying without any taxation, without any surveillance, without any drop, basically. you know. So in a nutshell... When we think about simple living, raising rabbits and chickens and, and you know, all of these, these plants and trees and stuff, they don't really give a shit who's in office. They don't give a shit who's, what the politics are, uh, what's going on in your life or anybody else's life. I think that there is a sort of relationship when you do grow even plants and animals, that there's a vibration if you get on a spiritual level that you guys kind of are in tune with each other, hopefully, if uh, the world, you know, the people in the world aren't completely 100% fucking robotic and dead. But what I like about this is there's who gives a shit if Amazon shuts stuff off? Who gives a shit if Google drops off your fucking business? You still have sustenance. The simple life just keeps giving. And for some reason, a lot of us have been, uh, I think, tricked or bred. I think our, our uh, minds have been bred and filled up with a bunch of different information that we forgot how to do these things. We're no longer in tune with nature. And even though we still have it in us, if you take any city person and you showed them a pile of just this brown, you know, yellow, let's just say, I don't know, I'm making up colors, just this light beige soil, and you held it in your hand, and then you took some rich, dark, amended soil with compost and everything, he says, which one looks better? They would definitely look at the dark one and say, that looks like, that looks like the good stuff. How do they know? Because it's in our... It's in our, our DNA to hunt, to fish, to forage, to, to share, to, you know, group up, to have interactions with people. So I think that a lot of parts of our lives are actually spiritually, energetically, and, and stress levels and things like that. We're in these boxes. We're in these cubicles, you know, and you look around you at that even million dollar houses, places where I work. They're like five feet to 10 feet away from each other. Almost zero backyard, zero contact with nature we've paved the roads we always wear tennis shoes our feet never really get to touch the ground uh you know nature we're, we're, everything needs to always be clean if we get spiders and things in our house it's a bad thing even though spiders catch flies and things like that it's very unsightly so basically nature has become this obscenity and this 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 dirty thing and actually in most cases i think the enemy where if we let things flow, it's actually part, it is our friend. And it's, it's in our friend, our biggest friend, I think, in life that we should remember, I guess. And I talk to myself when I say this message is that, remember where we came from. What are we? We're fucking animals. Just like the deer and the, you know, we have this intelligence about us and everything, but we still have this, this need where this, where if you lay down in the summertime, you know, early in the morning where it's night, it's kind of at that borderline cool, like cold, and then the sun starts to come out and you feel the sun on your skin and you remember something. Then you look up at the clouds and you see how blue the sky is, like a, a, a sky full of just cauliflower, cotton candy clouds with a dark blue setting like they used to have, like in South America where I used to live. 
you would just see that it just there's a de defining line like you could walk on them like they were solid but the the energy that it give out was just made you feel so comfortable made you feel clean made you feel happy so these are the things i look at in our lives that we're, we're a lot of us are missing out on and closing ourselves off but as things progress, as AI and, and the world that we live in right now in 2021 moves forward, uh, the answer to life really, to me, is to maybe move towards a more simple, even more simple than the way I live right now. Uh, I don't want to repeat myself over and over again, but I live pretty damn simple. I live in a, <laughs> in a 280, I think, square foot uh, box, you know, a, a, a tiny house, travel trailer. And I've simplified my life. And right now, I really got to start figuring out what to do for income, uh, something diversified. It's not immediate that's happening to me, but I always like to have something in my back pocket, a plan B, plan C, uh, to take care of me and my family. And there's a lot to that. That's why I might take a, a giant break from the show for a while to figure those things out. But that's what I've come up with, though, is... is Looking at the simplicity of life, how com the complications of things, how things are supposed to make your life simpler and easier, right? Digital banking and your fucking, your card, right? I'm having trouble with my, my uh, um, debit card right now. Sometimes for my business, it keeps, it won't uh, take, it won't, won't read. And then what happens is it charges me like three times and my bank account shuts down. Then I got to call the bank and have it reset. And all these different things. I had people steal money, my card from the gas station, uh, they copied my card and I started getting charged in Texas and, and Los Angeles when I live in San Diego. Had to call about, so you're, you're constantly being robbed without even knowing it. Right? There's, just const there's just stuff everywhere. I don't even know why. I guess I laugh out of frustration. But all of these things, every once in a while, I think compile. And I think when you're a person, maybe we could say like a woke person. Uh, I don't know what the fuck that, that whole thing is. I know a lot of people are pissed off, but... I look when you're just kind of like awake where you are in tune with nature and you do utilize nature you're, and then you're in the technological world like 50-50 like I am for business and things like that. You're kind of, you're on the fence and you're always sitting basically in two different worlds and every once in a while it gets pretty heavy because it's hard to comprehend what exactly is going on here and where, especially when you get overloaded with things when you're starting a digital business like me and you get these things, you know, where it could all be taken away from you within a push of a button. You know, those, that's very stressful. So that's kind of the stress that I look at of where I'm coming from. Do I want to live under that pressure? And I think a lot of us don't realize that we are sitting ducks. I've talked about this where we go and we don't produce anything in our lives except for money, which comes into our hands and goes out of our hands. It's an open loop system. It's a, it goes in, it's a U shape. It goes into a pipe in one end goes down and, and feeds, has a purpose, and then flies out the other end and never come back. A closed-loop system is where the money comes in and starts to work for you. Maybe kind of like an aquaponic system, as I've said before, where you know the fish poop and pee, and the plants love the poop and pee. They convert that into energy, into, into nutrients. They utilize it to grow. In turn, they, uh, they, they uh, polish and clean the water of these contaminants and give oxygen to the, the water, and it's a symbiotic relation. Nothing ever leaves. It just stays in there. There's constant produce off those plants. You can let them go to seed, drop those seeds back inside some media and the rocks of an aquaponic system with the fish. And you keep growing so much food to where it's perpetual. But unlike us, we are dependent on going to the grocery store to buy shoes and clothing and pay for heating and cooling uh, for food. So whatever the, the Frankenstein weird fucking food that's on the shelves is what we're, we're offered for the hard money that we work to make doing things that we don't like to do under the stress of someone could push the button, you know, and sometimes and for some of the instances for us type of people and shut things down. So what if we were though, to go back to the land, you know, and it's pretty cheap. I think a lot of people don't want to live way out in the country. I'm thinking like 45 minutes to an hour out of any big city to where you can produce and you can barter. I mean, there's a lot, a lot to it. And that's kind of been where my mind is, is where do we go? What do we do? I don't want to live under this shadow and under this, this shaking of the tree where I could fall out. I want to grow my own food. I want to, to live a life where it's on my terms. And I, I really, 
really starting to look, I mean, everything's great. I make great money and things like that here. I'm sure most of you, or a lot of you, probably not most of you, but a lot of you do too, but we're just getting by, right? I'm doing more than just getting by. I'm actually saving and looking to invest. I'm waiting for everything to crash because I really do think it's going to crash. And I've positioned myself and continue to position myself into these things, which is another reason I think I might need to take a break because I'm thinking about going for full-blown money. <laughs> I want to save a bunch of money so I could buy maybe that property and uh, make a move. But yeah, I don't know what people are doing, what they're not doing, but it seems like we're just getting by. And for how long? And I don't think it's for everyone. I think the bright lights of the Matrix, you know, all of the the uh, the, the the shows, all the the lights and everything, and the the restaurants, the flavors, the dancing, the sounds, the smells of all of this stuff is very intoxicating and very uh, uh, alluring. And I think that for a lot of people to sit and watch when the frogs show up to the the land, with how their migration patterns are, the geese and ducks and things like that, watching trees grow and how rivers shift the land and building swales and, you know, gardening and growing trees and, and strategically planning out your life where instead of going to make a, somebody else money, you know, worrying about uh, heating and cooling at your home, you actually raise your own wood for heating and uh, strategically place like trees for shade and things for cooling at your home, depending on where you live with mastering where the breezes move watching nature watching your property how you can utilize it that's not for everybody right how the wind moves watching noticing how the trees are are bent towards a certain area sig signify signaling that the tree the the wind is more prominent from this area to that area from to say north to south and you can tell all this by looking by reading on your land by by sitting down for a while and really giving some observation and becoming part of your land and in fact, what a beautiful way that when you do depart this world, that you go back to your land into the ground of the land that you have and your family members are there as well. Grandpa and mom and dad and you and, you know, your children inherit this beautiful area. I think it would, I think it would be a wonderful life. And I think that we're losing uh, touch with all of that. <clears throat> and I think that a lot of intuition has been uh, successfully killed and distracted and wrung out of a lot of us people. And I feel like things are getting worse. And I don't know really what the answer is for the multi, for the millions of fucking people. But again, I think a lot of, of the millions, the majority of people are going to want to just sit in the city and get spoon-fed what they're given. But if you're a person that you're feeling all of this, ask yourself, how long am I supposed to live this way? And when I always say, you know, people get angry at me for saying well, you, you got to run your life like a business. If you don't, What's going to happen? Take a look at your plans. I don't mean to depress anybody, but take a look at your plans. What's your plan to get the fuck out of whatever it is that you don't want to be in? And what have you done about it? Usually it takes money. Usually it takes planning. It takes strategic relocation. All of these things need a plan. You can't just take off and just go, you know, stick a flag somewhere in the earth. Say, hey, here, this is my home now. You know, you got to purchase it. You got to learn how to purchase it. You got to have money to purchase it. You got to figure out what what you're able to grow, what you're able to do, what you're going to be able to produce for yourself. But the sad thing is, and even in part of my life, I watch the speed at which I'm moving, and you know we're we're moving towards getting out, towards doing something different, but at a very slow rate. And when I look at other people and talk to them, I see them as not even moving at all. And the thing that scares me sometimes is that I look and and see that most of us without a plan, most of us without working extra hard to get out of here will remain doing the same thing that we're doing for the rest of our lives if we don't make a huge, huge change. If we don't get things in perspective, if we don't get a bird's eye view. Uh, so yeah, that's this, that's, this not a very happy show. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I think it's the solutions though. Like I said, you kind of have to know well, what would make me happy. What is the solutions to all these problems? So as I said, with the technological world, things just keep evolving more and more into technology, which is supposed to be a better thing. But then we have all of these, these people that could uh, do ransom hacks and stuff like that, shut down things. Basically, they could shut down the food industry, which they did. Uh, was it JLP or something, the biggest meat manufacturer in the United States here? They shut them down. They hacked the system. If they can do that, if they can hack the drinking water of a small town in Florida, if they can shut down the, the oil pipeline in eastern uh, United States, 
What else could they fucking do? And how susceptible are we? It's not necessarily to the powers that be. Maybe it is them pushing the button, but think about it. A lot of people don't understand that the grocery stores have maybe two to three days worth of food in them. If everybody went to grocery shopping at the same day, just freaked out and said, oh my God, the supply chain got shut off. They'd go in there, they'd empty it all out. We'd go home and be like, I'm fine for a week, maybe two weeks. Unless you've prepared yourself like I have and others where you're good for a couple months. But even then, after a couple months, what are you going to do? So to understand, I guess, what you want, where you want to go, how you're going to do those things is, is the, of the utmost importance, I think. Because life, I think, is definitely keeps going by and it's easily uh, distracting when we sit in this type of lifestyle where we're so busy and there's so many problems, so much heaviness that we don't have time to think about, you know, what's good for the planet, what's good for us. But as I see uh, f compiling, that's what I hope in the show is for people who are looking for something like that. If we continue to, to do the show, um, that's the information that I'm looking. I'm going to do this anyways. For instance, I will tell you guys my library. What am I doing about all, the, all of this? What's my solutions? My solutions are to educate yourself like I'm doing. I have a book, uh, which by the way, uh, I think we may have Joseph Lofthouse on the show. He is a, uh, a land race uh, plant breeder. <coughs> he uh, saves seeds and he breeds them against uh, uh, diseases and pests. He's, he's done things to where the raccoons and possums won't eat his uh, t certain types of tomatoes. He's bred them. I think it was skunks or something like that. I can't remember. We'll get them on the show anyways and talk about it. But saving seeds and breeding them to, to adapt to where you live for not just for survival, but for the ultimate flavor. Uh, so I've got his book on how to save seeds, how to breed your own plants, just like the way they breed animals. Uh, we've got uh, worm farming from commercial scale to small scale. Why is this important? Because if we're living off a piece of land and we're producing our own food, instead of having large amounts of compost that we have to turn by hand and create all this work, we can literally build beds with worms and have them do the work for us. It's like an employee that you never really pay. Well, you pay once, you buy them, and then they multiply. And all they ask for is that you give them garbage and they'll consume this thing and turn it into worm castings, which is what? The best type of fertilizer you could put on your farm, hands down, on your garden. So... Uh, I've got Water for Every Farm by Mark Shefford, how to key line, how to swale land to capture water for trees and things like that, for drinking water and wherever you are, for, for any farm, for any, any place in the United States, probably anywhere in the world. How to carve the land. Uh, I've got the permaculture books, Bill Mollison's big black book on how to create, diversify your land for energy, solar water, building berms, swales, hookah culture, ponds, I mean, you name it. Uh, we've got, I've got, some, those are just some of the books that I have. I have, a uh, um, Masanubu Fukuoka's book on, uh, the one straw revolution. I have two of his books, I believe on how to just throw seed to make little seed bombs. They're called, and that's taking seed, wrapping them with fertilizer and clay. And they turn into these little balls. And then you just throw these things around your yard everywhere. And what happens is that when they stay preserved in this little clay ball, when the rain hits them or any moisture, they slowly start to melt. The bugs won't eat the seeds because they can't get to them through the, the, the hard clay. Uh, there's a little bit of nutrients in there for the plant to start to grow. It works its way into the ground. And then next thing you know, you got a, just this jungle of food growing everywhere. And you let live what wants to live and let die what wants to die. And just pretty much, you just let it go wild. Things like that. So prepared myself for many things of diesel mechanics and and uh, solar power, which I have a lot of experience already with. But learning all of these things, how is the way that I can design my life and what's the information that I need? How can I invest into myself with knowledge and experience so that when I do get to in the place where I want to go, I have everything all set up. I have the know-how. I have a plan, right? So that's the kind of move that I look at. Educate yourself to know what's out there. And that's what I kind of want to do is educate you guys and share with you guys what I know. What would it be like to get off the system, to get off the grid? You know, I don't think in my book, I think off the grid 100% is ridiculous. Uh, not for, it's just for, for individuals. Like for me, I want to have a cell phone. I want to have internet. Internet and the cell phone has changed my life. That's the one part of of technology that I think I learned so much, so much. It saved me thousands of dollars. It made me thousands and thousands of dollars. It helps me to repair things. And I think in some instances, helped me save lives. Um, 
so yeah, I think that some of this 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 uh, black and white to go just completely off off grid and things like that is not for everybody. For some people, yeah, but to have some sort of marriage with that to find out again what you want personally. So. I'm just rambling off. I think I need to get timed where I can organize more strategies, I think, for you guys. Um, how to do, actually, maybe the worm castings. How to do the key line designs and hygge culture and things like that. But I don't know. I don't know what's going on out there. I don't really get very many comments. I know we're getting, you know, some a, a good amount of listeners. Um, not really great, but I don't know if it's because the show hasn't gone out there, but... You know, I, I haven't really marketed the show, but I don't really hear much from a lot of the viewers, but I know we are, we do have a pulse. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But I've got to get to work. I've got a lot of stuff to get going and rearrange. And those are the kind of things that I'm working on. And I, I think that for, for you guys as well, anything that even if you, you produce your own herbs off a windowsill is still something. And it actually gives you a connection and it actually, instead of growing some sort of fucking house plant that has flowers on it that looks maybe pretty, why don't you grow something that actually has flowers that look pretty, maybe not as pretty, but you can actually eat as well. And it gives off an aroma in your home, you know, it gives you sustenance where you can stack functions. I don't know, guys. I guess I might be full. I'm on the, one of those down areas, if you can't tell, but I need to get myself back up. I need to get the energy back up. I need to figure out what I'm doing here and probably just take a rest. I think it's it's becoming too much. All of this stuff is becoming too much. And I think I just want to, yeah, just take a break. It sounds so good to just go to the land if it was possible. And I had it all figured out, which I don't yet. And just go to the land and just turn your back on all this madness for a while and not worry about it. So, guys, that's the show. Uh, <laughs> not the most chipper I know. But you guys know what to do. I guess I don't even need to fucking say the you know, comments down below and all that shit. But as I always say, go out there and have yourself a new life experience. Don't lose your muchness. Carry on the fire. Human up. Live it, love it, own it, and bone it, my friends. <laughs>